Hi folks, Brian Keen back with you again. Today, I'm going to be reading a story from my collection, All Dark, All the Time, The Complete Short Fiction of Brian Keen, Volume 2, available on Kindle, in paperback, etc. Uh, this story is called Keepsakes. And what's that? Before I begin, you're asking, Brian, why are you reading in a creepy basement? Well, that'll become apparent as we read the story. Cole put down the action figures and eyed the stuffed purple dragon. Who's that? Binky? Emery frowned. Everybody knows him. Haven't you ever seen the Binky show? No. Cole lowered his head. We never had TV. We've got one, Emery said. Mom and Dad let me watch it once a week. Any more than that and we'd run the generator down. But since you and your dad are here, maybe they'll make an exception. They were in Emery's room one of four such rooms in a bunker. The sounds of adult conversation drifted under the door. Cole heard his father telling Emery's parents about what they'd gone through outside. His dad mentioned Cole's mother and began to whisper. Cole wished he wouldn't do that. He didn't remember his mother, other than that old photograph that dad carried in his pocket. Dad rarely talked about her. Cole wished he knew more. How does it work, he asked, the TV. Emery shrugged. You pick a movie, put it in, and watch. I've got a bunch of them. But let's not watch Binky. He's for little kids. The boys sat quietly for a moment. Neither was used to having a playmate. What's it like out there anyway, Emery asked. I've never been outside. Dad says I can't help him scrounge until I'm older. What are the other people like? Hungry, Cole said. Dirty. Sad. Where did you live? Underground. Like this? Cole shook his head. No, it was smaller. Dad said it used to be a maintenance shop for the subway. I'm not sure what that means, though. You guys lived in the subway tunnels? Cole nodded. Until they flooded. Then we had to leave. And then people were hunting us. You know, for food. Sick! We killed a few, but then more came. So we ran. Slept in an old car for a few weeks until it got cold. Eventually, we met your dad, and he invited us back here. That surprised me, Emery admitted. We've never let anybody in before. I hope we don't run out of food. Cole fell silent and picked up another action figure. Not that one, Emery said, reaching for the toy. It's my favorite. I don't want you to break it. Cole slowly looked around the room. He'd never seen so many toys. Action figures, trucks, blocks, puzzles, a wooden train set, games... Emery's room was filled with them. The only toys Cole had ever had were a small metal car with chip paint and a plastic figurine that his father had told him was a character from something called a video game. But it wasn't just the toys. Emery's clothes were clean and didn't have holes in them. His hair was washed and cut. He had food and water to drink, clean water no less. Cole hadn't heard Emery's stomach grumble once since they'd arrived. His room was dry and warm, and there were soft pillows to lay on, rather than cold, hard concrete. There weren't any spiders dropping down on him while he slept, or rats squeaking in the corners and rushing out to bite and nip. He had television and movies and medicine and electric light. He even had a mother. He especially had a mother. Cole moved quickly, listening to the adults talking in the other room while he choked Emery to death. When at last he removed his hands from around the other boy's throat, he had everything he'd ever wanted. Almost. He'd just have to kill Emery's father next. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Stay tuned later this year for a brand new podcast called Stories. Every week, it'll be me doing this, reading you a story. And then after that, I will tell you a long story about how that story was created.